Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'll try a new brand of digital audio players, which is Onyx, which are collaborating with Shining for quite some time. This is their very first portable digital audio player called Overture XM5, which has some serious tech on the inside, which I'll mention in a second. Most of its components were made to function with AC power devices, so uh, its headphone amplifier section packs a serious punch and its DAC section can be compared with mid-sized mid-fi DAX, but more on that later. It will cost you 739 bucks or 819 euros, and I think is the right time to check it out. Before we move on to build quality controls and sound impressions, here is a short history lesson about this brand. They are here for quite a while, as you can see, they are mostly building high-end stereo equipment, and only recently started making portable devices of all sorts, they already have a dongle, this portable player, a massive portable DACAM combo, and a desktop 3-in-1 setup, which I tried at high-end Munich last year. After playing with it for a while, checking out all those functions, all those features, and also listening to music, I felt the presence of Shining on all of those levels. They certainly left a mark on this unit, not only when it comes to sound performance, but also when browsing its UI and when checking the internal components. So I'm pretty sure they have a pretty strong relationship, which is great news since Shiling has lots of experience with portable devices of all sorts. Let's start with the build quality. And this is where I believe XM5 is shining like a rock star. We have a fully CNC machined aluminum unit made out of high grade aluminum. Uh, the volume wheel, which is uh, quite big, is not wobbling at all and offers a decent physical resistance. We have four buttons which are offering a satisfying click and again are not wobbling at all. Uh, we have a smaller display of 3 inch and uh, 720p resolution, but it's a much higher quality one as well, since this is an OLED panel for a clearer picture and infinite contrast level. We have a 4.4 balanced output, we have a regular 3.5mm output, we have a volume wheel which also acts as an on-off button, and on top we also have a micro SD card slot and a USB Type-C connection for file transfer or for using this fellow as a USB dock. As for tech inside it, we do not have an open Android platform, and it already makes sense why they went with a smaller 3-inch screen. Instead, they choose to use a much simpler interface built from the ground up, which feels very similar to that of the Shining M5 Ultra that I have reviewed a few weeks ago. This whole thing is running on the Ingenic X2000 system-owned chip, which isn't that fast and powerful, but it's more than enough for a simpler interface like this. While we cannot install third-party apps, we have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity and even Tidal integration. This is mostly an offline music player that relies on music stored on your micro SD cards, letting you occasionally use Tidal if that's your main streaming platform. We have a wide array of playback modes, including USB DAC option, DLNA, AirPlay and two-way Bluetooth. Moving on to everything that has to do with audio, the headphone amplifier circuit is based on the legendary TPA6112 chip, which was made to be used mostly in desktop components because it consumes lots of power. As a direct result, XM5 provides almost 1.1 watts of power uh, via the balanced output on high gain and 310 milliwatts of power via the regular headphone jack uh, in the same load. So that is a lot of power. Uh, that is more power than what uh, most of headphones are needing. And uh, for this size and weight, I do believe this is the most powerful unit that I have tried around here. Shining M5 Ultra provides uh, pretty much the same power output, but that one is slightly bigger. This one is smaller and this one can be described as a pocket rocket, considering how much power it provides. The only drawback of this headphone amplifier is a slightly higher output impedance of 4.7 ohms via the regular headphone jack and 6.6 ohms via the balanced output, which is very similar to that of the Shining M5 Ultra, which we tested a few weeks ago. The flagship and desktop level ESS 9039 Pro DAC chip was used in here, uh, together with that latest XMOS digital receiver for maximum performance, not only as a portable unit, but also as a USB DAC as well. 
Last but not least, it can work as a sender or as a receiver via Bluetooth, and it supports all the fancy codecs, including LDAC and aptX HD. Moving on to sound impressions, if you already accepted the fact that the only streaming platform available is Tidal and that you cannot install uh, third-party apps, then there is one thing that can potentially change the frequency response of your dynamic driver IMs or desktop headphones, and that's the output impedance of this unit. Considering the rule of eights, which states that the output impedance of your source of your headphone amplifier should not exceed one-eighth of the impedance of your dynamic driver IMs and headphones, it means that we shouldn't use IMs or dynamic headphones with a lower impedance than that of 37.6 ohms via the regular jack and 52.8 ohms via the balanced output, Otherwise, some portions of the frequency response could go up and down, uh, usually adding a mild hump in the mid bass and slightly rolling off the upper treble. I did, however, try a bunch of desktop dynamic headphones and a few IMs, which have a much lower impedance compared to what the rule of eights is suggesting. And subjectively speaking, I couldn't feel anything going up and down in terms of frequency response. Hell, even those high bezeta, which have an impedance of nine ohms, uh, worked outstanding on this unit, so I wouldn't worry too much about the output impedance. It's slightly higher, okay, but it's not exactly 80 or 120 ohms like a few desktop headphone amplifiers are providing. Right off the bat, I could sense a few things with the XM5. Uh, first of all was the power output, which was higher than usual. It was easily driving most of my headphones, except for one and a half, but more about that in a minute. Uh, secondly, it was extremely resolving and clean sounding, more so compared to Shining M5 Ultra, compared to 5 M23, compared to Hybe R6 Pro 2. Uh, that came as a surprise. I knew that Shining and Onyx can make a resolving sounding unit, but this one is uh, more resolving compared to its competition, so this is a very uh, pleasant surprise in a way. Thirdly was a sensation of effortlessness that uh, was coming from this one when listening to music, not only via IMs but also via desktop headphones. I can only presume that uh, lots of power and those desktop components made the sound more effortless and easygoing in a way. And drum roll quite a natural sounding tonality, having a fuller bodied mid-range, a stronger bass delivery, and also an extended but uh, unoffensive treble delivery at the same time. This is not really surprising knowing that Shining was behind this uh, sound profile and sound tuning because all of their players are actually quite relaxed sounding in the treble and quite full bodied and punchy sounding in the bass and quite sweet sounding in the mid-range. But above all, what impressed me the most with this unit was actually dynamics or transit response or the punch in the bass, which was actually higher compared to what I was getting from Shining M5 Ultra compared to uh, Hybe R6 Pro 2 and more so compared to 5 M23, which was okay, but this one is basically a bass head dream in terms of bass punch and impact. The feeling of sounding badass starboard and punch in the bass was felt not only with sensitive IMs but also with desktop headphones of all sorts. And even if this is basically the smallest portable digital audio player that I can compare with the M5 Ultra, M23, R6 Pro, this one provides the strongest punch and control in the bass. And if you consider yourself a bass head, then I don't know if you can do better than this below one kilobuck. I'll briefly talk about its noise floor with ultra sensitive IMs. I believe I have tried five IMs in total, a few full balanced armatures from a Fire and a Westone, a few hybrid IMs from Hybe and also single driver IMs as well. And regardless of what headphone jack I was using, regardless of the gain, it could be even high gain or even max volume, I simply couldn't detect any traces of noise. It was completely dead silent. We have lots of power in this unit, more than what any of these IMs can handle, but I'm very glad that distortion and noise didn't go up. And I know I probably sound like a broken record, but uh, every newest uh, Shining device or everything that has to do with Shining 
All of them sounded really noiseless with ultra sensitive IMs and the same story repeats itself uh, with the Onyx XM5. And of course with sensitive desktop headphones like Focals, Apple's Caspian like Kenerton headphones, you can forget about noise and distortion because there is none of that in here. I won't talk too much about the power output because from tens of digital audio players that I have tried so far, this one together with the Shining M5 Ultra were second only to Fire M17, which mind you is considerably bigger and much, much heavier unit. However, if I take size into consideration and weight, then this one is without a doubt the most powerful at this size and at this weight. I need to say that this one works great not only with IMs but also with desktop headphones of all sorts. From my collection it was easily driving most of them uh, from the usual suspects like Mezi Elite, like uh, Elzetich Karibdix, like uh, Kenneton Drogner. I couldn't go louder than 65 out of 100 volume steps available and mind you I'm listening very loud at around 90 to 95 dB. Uh, with Sennheiser HD800S I needed to go louder, around 75, but still I had plenty of headroom available, so yes, it can drive even HD800S. You know what's funny? Even T plus A Solitaire P sounded great with this one, almost like uh, engaging a desktop headphone amplifier, but actually it depends what desktop headphone amplifier, because if those are small SMSL or topping units, then this one is more impressive in this regard. So yes, it was able to drive the T plus A solid therapy almost close to the maximum potential and mind you, those are very hard to drive. Only in the Hive Monsters Vara wasn't really driven fully. Uh, yes, I had enough volume, but I couldn't feel the drivers, you know, rattling my school. The bass was not really punchy and it was not very controlled. The sound was lightweight and quite loose, so no, they didn't work that great with the Hive Monsters Vara, but more than great uh, with the Solitaire P, which for me is more than enough. Except for an impressive power output, the other two things which stood out head and shoulders above the rest were crazy dynamics and also resolution of this thing. I think you can kill two birds with one stone if you get the XM5 because it can function and it can compete with a mid-fi desktop DAC if you are talking about things like not separation, resolution, uh, the sounds that are coming on a micro scale from the background of your tunes because this one is truly impressive in this regard. When comparing this one with the Shining M5 Ultra, with the Fire M23, with the Hybe R6 Pro 2, it becomes apparent and quite fast that this one provides a little bit more information. There is more information on the micro scale and you'll hear the tiny sounds playing in the background on the XM5 and the intensity of those sounds won't be as impressive with the rest. However, what's more important than chip resolution, I believe, is having a really great tonal balance. And this is where I feel that Shining once again dipped their toes in the development of the XM5. When it comes to frequency response, XM5 is pushing the bass like it's playing the last tune of its life. It's quite energetic, uh, there is plenty of substance and oomph. So it's not really dry or lightweight, it's more like full bodied, having a really strong bass performance. And it goes to places like uh, you wouldn't expect it, like in classical music. And if you have some IMs or desktop headphones that are lacking in this department, in the bass, quantity and quality wise, then XM5 will be providing a helping hand pretty easily. The bass is by hair stronger than that of the Shining M5 Ultra, stronger compared to Hybe R8 Pro 2 and much stronger compared to that of the Fire M23. The mid-range shouldn't be impressive, sweet or seducing, uh, considering that we're listening to an ESSAB-based uh, digital audio player, but thanks to some mumbo-jumbo that Onyx and Shining apply together, I'm getting an overwhelming sensation of warmth when listening to my old rock tunes. I simply couldn't overlook the juicy mid-range overflowing my listening space. It was only by a hair less intimate and less organic sounding compared to Shining M5 Ultra, but you wouldn't believe that these two have world apart dark chips because they sound very similar in this regard. XM5 has some of that velvety texture that makes listening even to bright recordings a breeze. 
On that note, the trebles were clean and defined. Symbols were metallic but without becoming piercing. So I believe this is a highly technical treble but without the ringing associated with entry-level DAX. So this is a brightness-free sounding digital audio player while keeping up with fast double drums and never messing with their leading edge. Overall, it provides an extended frequency response with a small dose of bass energy and substance. Wrapping up like a Shining M5 Ultra before it, this is not the smartest dub out there and its output impedance is slightly higher than usual. It does cost more than the Shining M5 Ultra and this extra cost is bringing you more resolution, more inner detail and a nicer grip over headphone drivers. Perhaps what makes it unique is the combination of excellent technicalities with a very good dose of musicality that makes it clean, distortionless, but also fun to listen to. If you don't care for third-party app support, then this little fellow is up there with some of the fanciest digital audio players that I have tried so far without drilling a hole in your pocket. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed my review. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video. My name is Sando and I'll see you very soon.